Hey, welcome to Art with Ian. Today, we're talking about creature design. That's coming up next. All right, welcome to episode three of the creature design series. So in the last episode, we were doing thumbnailing. The episode, the first episode, we were just looking for reference and figuring out what it is we want to design. So here in episode three, we are going to be doing line cleanup. So I mentioned in the thumbnailing episode that I was kind of torn between uh, this here and this here. Um, and then I did this other design, this one here. And I kind of liked it, but I still like this overall idea better. Um, and so I took this one and I kind of messed with it just a little bit to kind of see um, if I was gonna still feel that way, if I kind of started pushing it a little, and I did like it, so that's gonna be the one we use. So I'm going to turn everything else off in this group, and I'm gonna blow this up. A lot of times at this point I would decide like if I'm going to pose it or what scene I want to put it in but for the sake of this lesson I'm just going to carry on with this I'm going to do my line cleanup and we're going to just render this image here so so we've got that all right now what I like to do when I go to clean my line work up is I like to turn down the opacity of my original layer or my original thumbnail sketch and then I create a new layer which control shift N will do that. Um, I actually need to get my color wheel which I don't have in here right now. I'm gonna grab this. All right, bring this in. Okay, I'm gonna go a little darker. I'm gonna stay with my kind of reddish, dark red kind of color. Um, and sometimes I like to choose a, a different, like an inking brush or something, but it depends on if I'm gonna leave my line work in. I think for this, I'm probably gonna end up painting it out. So, that being said, Let's just, I'm just going to carry on with this brush. So as I get into line cleanup now, um, this is where more decisions can be made. This is where you should, uh, you should be deciding what it is that you liked about your thumbnail and what it is you want to maybe push from, from that stuff. And then what it is you didn't actually really accomplish or that you might want to push uh, or you know the changes you want to make uh, decisions that you that you feel like you could um, go a different direction with and I like this kind of somewhat turtle esque beak like thing for his, his mouth area or his head so I'm gonna just gonna go with that for now, but we'll see how I feel. And that's the thing, I never, I try to, I try to never um, fully lock, lock down uh, as I go because the thing that happens when you do that is that you, you shut the door on creativity, on, on op opportunities to, to do something potentially that would have been way, you know, way better for the design than what it is you actually end up doing because you have this rigid sort of mindset um, kind of dictating every decision you make when when you could be more if you're more open throughout the entire process then your your design has the best opportunity to uh, to evolve and grow into something better than maybe what it would have been otherwise So 
So there's some stuff in here where I, I definitely am pretty vague on exactly what decision I was gonna make. Like, that's a uh, that's something in thumbnailing that I really, I like to be. Sometimes, if you're super loose and and pretty vague, you can actually get your brain to see things that you you didn't actually think of in the line work as you come back later. And um, that's kind of a neat thing to have happen. Like you don't always have to be completely in charge of every decision. You can see things in scribbles, you know, kind of like the whole you see stuff in the clouds mentality where, you know, we just, we find shapes, patterns, designs, we find those things in, in the world without even trying, we just do. And so, you know, take that kind of mentality to your art too, as well. So this in here is like gonna be like that fleshy kind of transition. These are just in more indications of the form then they probably are actual detail like I'll probably be using like a like a bumpy kind of texture um, something probably based off of my snapping turtle uh, reference which if you're if you're interested in in the whole process of finding references um, I'll put a link to that video up in the corner so you can check that out I like this idea that um, the armor sort of sharpens to a like this is um, all coming kind of to a point and we're not actually seeing the other side and then just here where the hip kind of transitions back out we see that it's actually the there's forms on the other side and that's this area here where the body widens back out for the stance is where we kind of sell that and then I talked about the idea of carrying the the armor motif further um, than just his upper body which I, I talked about how in order for this guy to move properly he would have to have some fleshy uh, organic well I mean armor can be organic too but fleshy stuff uh, something that that bends and moves in order to um, stretch you know like flesh so I, I still am not a hundred percent decided on that but I do like the idea of making sure the, um, the, the armor motif is carried properly so it doesn't look too odd, I suppose. I was thinking maybe in the kneecap here, it could be, there could be some kind of armored thing happening or maybe This part's armored up on top. And then, uh, and then there's like a, a, maybe like that. And then like the, his lower leg is just regular flesh. Definitely looks like that's kind of what I was indicating to myself when I was doing the sketch which was a while ago now. Also, it looks like I've got two different, I gave myself two different ideas for how the legs and hips attach. I just realized I, I, was, I left it open to choose which way. I like this way, so I'm actually going to, I'm gonna hit my eraser up here real quick. Get the proper eraser. Okay, so it should be like 
hip comes out, there's armor like material and then the leg. We need to show it kind of wrapping around here, right? So we, we need the form to feel like it goes around. This form here needs to feel like it goes around this form here. Otherwise, this isn't growing out. You have to think about what's making room for what. How does the body actually work? How does this thing actually work? You know, when you're like obviously this is not real this thing is not real it doesn't look it doesn't look like anything you've ever seen on the, on the planet but it has to look like if it did, if it was real it could actually function at least enough to to sell the design and that's a that's a huge part of doing this kind of this kind of stuff i think that um Again, with the forearms, we could maybe armor that up some. I see a good opportunity to kind of do that here. Maybe put some spikes on to match up with his shell back there. He still needs... Uh, I had a Gorilla as my inspiration for the arm and, and that and so I, I still want him to have like biceps um, and that kind of like anatomy but kind of armor plated forearms maybe for bashing into stuff you know might be cool it would make some sense evolutionarily speaking I think like and again, that's another thing you have to absolutely be considering when you when you do this. Does it make sense? Would it actually improve the creature's chance for existence? The decisions you make, because in this in this world, uh, in any world you create, is going to be scrutinized from peop by people who live in this world. And in this world, if you don't make evolutionary sense, you don't exist. You, you, almost, you know, nine times out of ten, unless there's some freakish scenario where you, j you know, a creature gets away with it because there's just some other bizarre circumstance. But generally speaking, um, things that exist make sense. They exist because they have, they're well equipped to survive within the current scenario of the world. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I want this armor to go down or come up so you can see under there and see the, the connecting point for the hand. But because of the fact that his arms are going down and because we're below the horizon, lines that go up, upward, like um, frowny face lines, for lack of a better word, they, if you're not careful, they make the perspective look wrong. So, I think... I think I'm just gonna do downward. For now. And when I go to render, uh, when I start rendering it or whatever, I can always change my mind. I'm gonna do a little um, flare out here to show that it's making room for the the wrist, for the bone, and whatever is going on, you know, in that the functioning area there. And then for the hand, I'm going pretty much, you know, humanoid, like that ape. Um, I think I need to bring. Let's knuckle down to here. Uh, 
And you know, even when I tighten up my line work, I still try not to, um, you know, I want to show more of his finger. I still try not to go rigid, if that makes any sense. So, you, I don't know, you might watch other YouTubers or other artists or, you know, pay attention to other people's artwork. I'm assuming you probably do. And you've probably seen a lot of really tight line work out there. And that and that's a perfectly valid style. This needs to come out like this. And it has its place, certainly. Um, but I don't really like overly tight line work. I'm, I think that it looks really, really rigid and kind of destroys some of the... Like, have you ever noticed how sometimes your favorite piece of art is just like the the artist's original sketch, or or you know something that is got has a lot of life and it's pretty loose or whatever? Uh, there's a reason for that, and that's because there's energy in it. All the energy hasn't been sapped out of it by um, creating this overly clean you know, perfect line, line work everywhere kind of a, a thing, which can, it really can destroy the overall um, mood, you know, or energy. And that, that gets lost a, a lot in, in my work and anyone's work, you know, it's really easy to lose the, uh, the initial energy of the, the work. And certainly I think that um, overly tight line work is like the uh, surefire way to destroy the energy in the work. Looks like I was really, really vague with this hand. Of course I was. I didn't have to deal with it then, so why would I? <laughs> see here. Now following this, see my perspective grid? So I've got a line here. That's the same line. So now I, would, I don't, it doesn't have to be snapped into the grid 100%, but I know that if, if I get really far away from this distance from that line in, you know, relationship, this arm is going to look really weird. It's going to look, you know, um, out of proportion, I guess, <laughs> to put it simply. I'm not sure if I want his, I wanted, I want this, um, gorilla like thing where it's like, he's, he curls his hands up and is and is almost always ready to just knuckle, you know, get on his knuckles and and drive himself forward and stuff like that. You can see here also, by the way, where this foot is like this far away from that line and this foot is on it. And that is just the stance, right? That's giving the stance a little bit of life, basically. So for now, I think I'm going to tuck his thumb in like as if he's, you know, ready to kind of knuckle down but I don't know for sure if it'll stay that way you might notice a recurring theme in me saying I don't know for sure I don't know for sure and uh, like I mentioned early on in the in the video I love to keep an open mind to the design as it goes I, I absolutely don't approve of of going you know having a moment where you you lock on and you and you aren't open anymore to to what the piece can be or what it's telling you as it goes what certain decisions you make um, they they can talk to you they can tell you things like about the design that as you go if you're if you're open if you're not then then you'll you'll lose out on potentially design choices that could have really help to make the overall image work better. Alright, let's 
get up here. I still don't know exactly how I want to connect this shell. That might be one of those deep shadow moments where you don't actually offer the viewer a ton of information so that you don't have to uh, you don't have to do something overly believable with it. And there's a lot of that in um, in the real world. If you go look at, at photographs of, of creatures and things like that, you'll see a lot of areas where you, you don't exactly know how that functions. You know, you don't see it or it's in deep shadow or or whatever. And our, our brains are totally um, fine with that. Like if you if you don't give information to the viewer, they will just move on to where there is information. And that's about that's composition, you know, that's um, being in control of, of what the viewer sees, you know, your focal point, um, all that kind of stuff. Those are those are things you should be thinking about when you're when you're designing. I'm not gonna draw too many spikes on here. I know that I want them, so I'm just gonna indicate that's going to be more of a rendering thing where, you know, whatever lighting I choose, I'll use, um, I'll use a lighting setup so that when the light hits the spikes that are pointing kind of straight at you, they'll cast a shadow like this kind of a thing. And that will tell your brain, oh, this thing is, it's long ish, but it's pointing straight at me. And so I can see the shadow, but I can't see the actual length of the, the thing itself. I want the areas where the this arm is coming out from the shell type of material, I want it to look all like it moves a lot, and it has moved a lot for a long time. So that means tons of wrinkles and texture and all this kind of stuff up in here. Because this is a moving part coming out of a hard surface. can't say that I'm overly thrilled with this head design, but it's probably good enough to uh, to carry me into rendering and then I can maybe work it some just wondering about maybe bringing the this in like down like that. Yeah, I think that helped. I want it to look, I want it to look pretty mean, but I don't want it to look like mean, like bad guy in a cartoon mean, like um, where you're just mean because you're supposed to be a bad guy. I just want this thing to look intimidating without being forced into a, a design that seems like, oh, you're, you're the antagonist or you're the bad guy, so we're just going to cover you in bad guy tropes and and then everyone will know you're a bad guy and obviously I need I you know there's nothing wrong with sending visual messages that are clear and obvious to viewers but um, I think that the the message is I think I've done that with this and so I don't need to oversell it you know I think this this is very clearly uh, a creature that you wouldn't want to uh, get in the way of. Or at least I wouldn't want to get in the way of. Okay, I'm going to indicate that that's behind that line there. This one's in front, that one's behind. Stuff like that. 
Uh, again, if if you don't recall or if you haven't seen the reference episode, um, the spikes on the on the shell idea is actually from uh, is pulled from King Crab. just indicate that I want a ridge right here it's not gonna stay a line I don't think just like this won't stay a line this is just indicating a form turn a hard sharp form turn for when I come through to render and that's really what the the line work is when you when you're gonna paint your line work out you only draw what you need to draw to give yourself a roadmap for the line work you don't if it's not gonna stand alone as a drawing there's no point in doing a, an epic, you know, over the top type of drawing that that does more than it than it needs to do to get you in the right mind, mindset of what your painting is going to look like. All right, I think I'm giving him claws or talons or whatever. So I'll indicate those. I know I did over here, so I might as well. Stay consistent with that. Indicate some lines there. All right, let's back off a little bit here. Think, I think I'm probably happy enough with this to take it to paint. Um, just give it a look over real quick. Yeah, I think so. So that's going to wrap this episode up. That's the basic line cleanup. Um, in the next episode, we're going to get into blocking color. So make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notifications and don't miss episode four of this design, creature design series. Uh, all right, I'll see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, share it with your friends, ring the bell for notifications of future videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.